Before you watch this video, please first watch our videos 73 and 74, which will make this video make more sense. In this new video series, we will tell you the story about Thoth in a way that has never been told before from what we know. We believe it will make good sense and it is very logical. Thus far, however, no one seems to have recognized all these correlations we will bring up. Once we learn to understand this information, it will result in a totally new view on history and how we've been manipulated. It's very cleverly done and the truth, of course, has been heavily suppressed. What we will present here is something the overlords definitely don't want us to know. In videos 73 and 74, where we interpreted the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, we explained that Thoth has a body in stasis in the halls of Amenti, and with his father Enki's blessing, Thoth is incarnating here on Earth in different times, teaching humanity about science, religion, spirituality, magic, alchemy, and the cosmos. We also discussed that although Thoth in at least most of his different incarnations refer to his father as God and that his father is the real God. This means that Thoth is basically steering humankind toward the false ascension, misdirecting us, trying to prevent us from exiting the matrix. He's doing this by giving us a lot of true information which will hook us to him. This is of course by design so that we can give, he can give us the false message that we should go to God after we die. God being the father slash Enki slash the Demiurge. Thoth in the Emerald Tablets admits that he is also Hermes and Mercury and Noah. It is also more than likely that he is also Enoch. And one of the reasons we say this is because of the Metatron connection. Metatron is also supposedly the Archangel Gabriel. If we look at Metatron in Wikipedia, we can clearly see that Metatron and Enoch is one and the same, and Enoch was taken by God, whom would be Enki. In other words, Enoch returned to the halls of Amenti, commanded to do so by Enki. Then, if we Google Metatron Thoth, we will see that Thoth and Metatron are one and the same. In the two previous videos, we mentioned that Ningish Sida and Quetzalcoatl must have been Thoth as well, based on the teaching they provided. They are all very similar, and they all told people that they would return, which they have over and over in different incarnations. What becomes obvious as we study Thoth throughout history is that he is coming back to spread very similar teachings in different time periods. The only difference in his teachings is that it's modified to fit the times in which he teaches. Other than that, he usually has his pupils slash disciples to whom he's giving his teachings. These pupils then work as his scribes. Together, Thoth and his pupils are then educating the world around them. Keeping this in mind, we need to look at history in total, as we know it from the ancient texts. When we do, we can see when and where these teachers show up, spreading a very similar message. Thus we can, with quite some certainty, add more names to the list of Thoth's incarnations such as Krishna, Akhenaten, Jesus, Sir Francis Bacon, Saint Germain, Mahavata Babaji, and more. In addition to that, Thoth used, name, used human scribes and messengers while he was not in incarnation. A few of them might be Joseph Smith, the Book of Mormon, Helena Blavatsky, and some others. As you notice, we mention Jesus as well in the list. 
Readers of the West Penry Papers, WPP, might remember that I wrote that Jesus was Marduk. This still holds true to some extent, but there's more to the story, which we will reveal in this series. Courtney Brown's Farsight Institute did an interesting remote viewing project on the crucifixion and it gives us some clues as well. Ariel and I have observed that throughout history, when there have been pivotal changes in culture, society, religion and spiritual advancement, there appears to have been a character on the scene at the same time, assisting mankind in the process. We find this very interesting, and when we researched this further, we noticed that it looks as if it's the same character each time, intervening in humanity's evolution with his teachings. Our purpose with this new video series is not only to mention these humans and angelic beings, but to put history straight, showing exactly how this has been orchestrated from Egyptian times and to the present. We find this very interesting but more important. It is crucial that we know our true history so we can understand our present. Once we see how we've been manipulated by two different main factions of the AIF, the Enki team and the Marduk team, we can put things in a totally new perspective and we won't be so easily fooled again. Therefore, we highly recommend that you follow this video series and learn from it. It does make a big difference in the understanding of our situation today, but it also creates a greater understanding of what is to come. We humans are stuck between these two factions, being constantly used in an in extraterrestrial power struggle. Why is Thoth doing this? After putting two and two together, it seems obvious to us that Thoth wants to make sure that we don't forget who the real god is, i.e. his father Enki. Thoth is promoting a spiritual awakening and an ascension of the soul, but he wants to make sure we don't forget that heaven is his father's realm, and that's what we should aim for, or we are condemned to eternal darkness. Enki has always known that humankind will wake up, and he supports that. However, it needs to be on his terms. This means that it's fine to wake up spiritually, because Enki can't prevent it. But he wants to make sure that the spiritual community comes to him. Thus, the false ascension, the events, and recently, John Panellas and the Greek author, Angelica S. Anagos, Anagnosto Kalogera's work, which are just more Enki Thoth teachings. Panella and Anagnosto Kalogera might be unaware of this, not understanding the full story and how they are manipulated. Both Panella and the Greek lady are promoting a father god, and every time we believe in a father god, we end up with Enki. We can't emphasize this enough. It is crucial for everyone in the spiritual community to understand who Enki is. If we don't, the chance that we fall into his trap is almost inevitable. He's the trickster god. This is mentioned in almost all ancient texts. Still, people don't seem to notice this. He tricks us with love, compassion, benevolence and care. But once we have done our research, it becomes obvious that it's trickery. This is the reason why I have stressed since the beginning that this is a feminine universe. This is very important. Every time someone teaches that it's masculine, it's masculine Godhead, be very alert because it's deception. We humans feel totally abandoned here on earth and we desperately need someone to cling to and to help us. Therefore we tend to choose a being that seems the most benevolent. Enki shows th knows this and he knows exactly how to use this against us. Again we are our own saviors and we need to swallow that pill regardless of how bitter it is. 
This video is short and will work as an introduction for what is to come. We plan to address the people and the deities mentioned above one by one. We might make a video for each one of them and sometimes we'll discuss more than one in the same video. We hope this will be an interesting journey for the listener. It certainly is for us. Talk to you again soon.